Hi, I'm Beth from Sew Country, and today's tutorial is the new pattern for K. Ascona Designs, the Dewdrop Wristlet. This is the mini version of her other pattern, the Raindrop Bag. I also have a YouTube tutorial on that pattern that I will link in the description. This pattern is a really fun design. It's cute, it's quick, it's easy to come together. We have a front and a back panel. We have our zipper gusset and our bottom gusset. On this one, I have not attached my wristlet yet. I'm going to use a rivet strap, so that's, that's why you do not see a D-ring right here. But on the one today, I will be following the pattern exactly. This bag is fully lined, and we do finish the lining with binding. This is a great pattern to have on hand whenever you need to give a last minute gift or for a kid. It's going to be really cute if you do bags in clear and jelly vinyl. If you like to do appliques, there's going to be several included in this pattern. So it is really fun for you to kind of have a great base pattern and to let your creativity come out. So let's go ahead and get started with this pattern talking about the pieces we will need and go through the steps to complete this wristlet. When you purchase this pattern you will get the pattern piece for all the pieces here. I'm going to be using materials from Glitterbug Fairy. You can see that this is a vinyl we have a little panel for the front. We have a print for the back. This vinyl will be available to be purchased on their website, and you can also find them on Facebook in their Facebook group to see all the different versions of kits they're going to have for the Dewdrop Wristlet. I will link the Facebook group and the website both in my description as well as the pattern for the Dewdrop Wristlet. You will have a pattern piece and you will cut out four of these. Two exterior, front and back, and two interior. Since I'm using a vinyl for my front and back exterior, I do not need to interface them, but I did use the pattern piece to add a layer of Royal Pixie Heavy on the back for a little bit more support, support and stability. For the lining, since I'm using a waterproof canvas, I'm not adding anything to it. We will have our wristlet strap and our D-ring connector. We will have four zipper panels, two exterior and two interior. For the interior, again, I'm using the waterproof canvas, so I don't have anything on them. Since I'm using vinyl for the zipper panels, the only thing I did was add that extra layer of the Royal Pixie Heavy as a stabilizer. You can use Decaville Light if you do not have the Royal Pixie or any type of equivalent. We need to cut out two of the bottom gusset pieces. That's the big piece right here. I'm going to use vinyl and I do have that interfaced with another piece that is kept out of the seam allowance of the Royal Pixie Heavy and another piece of waterproof canvas. For hardware, I will be using a number five zipper. I will be using a D-ring and a swivel hook. I will also have two number five zipper pulls. So let's go ahead and get started sewing. Since this is a bound bag and I am not putting on any pockets to mine, we're going to go ahead and take one of our exteriors. This is my front. I'm going to lay it right sides down. I'll take one of my waterproof canvas pieces and I'm going to lay it wrong side down so the wrong sides will be together on your interior and exterior. I'll just put a clip or two in place to hold those together. And then what I'll do is I'll baste all around and that will have them ready for whenever we attach the zipper gusset around it. You will do this for both of your interior and exterior pieces so that we will have two completed units. And then repeat this same step for the other exterior and interior lining piece and then we will move on to the zipper gusset. Now that we have both of the exterior 
and the interior piece is connected, we are ready to go with our next step. So I'm going to set these two pieces aside until we need them later in the pattern. The next thing we're going to be working on is our zipper gusset. So I'm going to pull out my number five zipper tape. I'm going to pull out my four zipper gusset pieces. You should have two exterior, two interior, and they should either be interfaced or stabilized depending on what materials you're using. I am not going to attach my zipper pulls yet just because I feel like it's easier to sew this step without the zipper pulls attached. I will take one of my lining pieces, I will place it right sides up, I will take my zipper tape and place it right sides up, so both pieces right sides up, the wrong side of the tape is against the lining piece, and then I'm going to match up this long edge and I'm just going to baste it together. When I baste, I just do an eighth of an inch all the way down. So now that I have the lining basted on, what I'll do is I'll take one of my exterior pieces and I will put it right sides down onto my zipper tape. So right side of the tape, right side of the exterior zipper panel are together. You can clip these in place. You can use double sided tape, whatever your preference. The main thing we want to know is that we're going to have our short sides matching and this long edge matching on this side. Everything should line up perfectly at this point unless there is a cutting error. So if you have a big discrepancy, go ahead and refer back to the pattern to make sure you've got everything correct. I'm just going to put one clip in place here at the bottom for mine. But at this point, I will sew with the full seam allowance given in the pattern. Now that we have those sewn together, what we will do is we will just separate them from the zipper and that way they'll be folding wrong sides together. I do like to add clips all down this edge because I find it's hard to top stitch this part without having them clipped together because of shifting. Now that I have this clip together, I'm going to top stitch down the edge closest to the zipper teeth with an eighth of an inch. I'm going to be just an eighth of an inch away from the folded edge, not the zipper teeth. I'm also going to baste down this long raw edge just to kind of help things be all held together in one piece for whenever I do attach this to the exterior of the bag, it just makes it easier. When I'm top stitching this, I'll make sure that I'm pulling these away while I'm sewing to make sure that the back and the front are being sewn in the right way that we don't have things shifting or or stuff like that. Now I have this zipper panel completed on one side. I did top stitch and baste down the long edges just to hold everything in place. You can see it from the back here. I'm going to go ahead and repeat those same steps for the other side with the exterior and lining zipper panel. I finished my zipper gusset panel and I attached two zipper pulls and trimmed the ends of the zipper tape, the extra off. You do not have to use two zipper pulls, you can use one, whatever your preference is. So now that we have this zipper panel finished, we're going to add our D-ring onto it. For my D-ring tab, what I did was I drew a line right down the middle, and then I'm just going to fold both of the raw edges to this line. You can use double-sided tape if you want, or clips, whatever your preference is. After you have these two lines folded, then we're just going to top stitch down that folded edge just an eighth of an inch away on both sides. Now that I have both of those long edges folded to the back and top stitch, I simply slip that D ring on to the middle, match up those short ends and fold it wrong sides together. And then you can place it directly onto the side of your gusset, the end of your gusset here. Doesn't matter to me which side I place mine on right now because my zipper pulls are both in the middle, but if you have a preference, make sure you take care of that. I'm gonna leave a little bit of overhang here, 
And for me personally, I'm going to go ahead and add a row of stitches right across here to kind of keep that hardware from sliding around, but that's optional. And just for a personal preference, you do not have to do that. And now I will just baste this in place, leaving that little bit of overhang. So now that we have this part completed, what we're going to do is we're going to pull out our two bottom gusset pieces. You should have an exterior and an interior. They should be interfaced and stabilized with whatever you chose to use for these two pieces. I'm going to take my lining gusset piece and I'm going to have it right sides up. I'm going to take my zipper panel here and have it right sides up and just lay it directly on top matching up that short end. I'm going to baste this in place along this short edge to connect the two pieces. Now I will take my exterior piece and I will place it right sides down so that the right sides of the exterior and the right sides of my zipper panel will be together. At this point, I'm going to sew with the fullest seam allowance given in the pattern along this short edge. I'm going to take my exterior and my lining and I'm going to separate them from the zipper panel. This will put them wrong sides together. I will pull these two tight and then what I will do is I will top stitch and I will be top stitching on the bottom gusset exterior not on my zipper panel and I'll do that just an eighth of an inch away from that edge I just sewn. So now the folded edge. This is what I have so far. What I'll do now is I will take my exterior and bring it over right sides together with the zipper and match up that short edge. I'm going to place two clips here. I will take that lining piece and pull it and it will be right sides together with the right sides of the lining. I will clip that along that same short edge just making a zipper sandwich. No basting this time. I will just sew the full seam allowance across this short edge connecting all of these pieces. Now that I have that sewn together what I'll do is I'll open these up and flip them the right way, creating the gusset. I will separate the zipper, the bottom panels from the zipper and I'm just going to top stitch along them. I'll make sure I kind of hold it tight so things won't shift and it'll be a little awkward putting it in the machine but it fits just fine. I'm going to baste all along these long edges of the bottom gusset just to keep it secure and have it all as one piece and that will make it easier to attach whenever we go to add it to our main panel pieces. So we have our gusset completed, everything basted together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to match up these two seams on both sides and I'm going to just put a clip there and use that to help me mark my centers on the top and the bottom of this gusset. So I usually just put a clip here, but you can do whatever you want. You can make a small snip or you can use a marking tool, whatever you want to do for you. So now that I have the center marks on my gusset, I'm also going to make center marks on this main panel. The top's pretty easy. You can just kind of eyeball it. The bottom, you can just fold the right sides together to figure out where that crease is going to be for the center. Now that I have those marks made, I'm going to make sure my gusset is flipped inside out. And I'm going to attach this gusset to the front main panel, right sides together.
So whenever I'm attaching the gusset to the main panel, I start with the center marks first and clip those. And then I ease around this straight area and start going up on each side at the same time. I don't clip up one side and then at the other. This way I can slowly ease everything in. If I have any extra, like I had a little bit extra on the top, I can just make sure that I ease that around so that everything is even and fits properly. Where this is a small project, it's always a little more difficult to go around curves and things on a smaller project because the curves are a little bit tighter. So if you are struggling or new to working with vinyl waterproof canvas, these curves could be a little tricky. So what we're going to do is we will reduce the seam allowance. This is noted in the pattern. If you're working with fabrics like a cotton woven, you will use a bigger seam allowance going around this gusset area. For this purpose, in this, um, with the materials I'm using, I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance as my final seam allowance. But when I'm just attaching this first time, I'm going to go around with just an eighth of an inch basting stitch. This is going to give me a really good, kind of like a hand basting is what it's kind of doing. You could hand baste if you wanted. You could use staples, you could use glue, you could use double sided tape, whatever your preference is when working with areas that have tight curves. I'm just going to go slowly around. I won't move a clip until I get close to it. I'll use my stiletto if I need to. You can also use your hemostat to like hold two pieces together while you're stitching near it. So it's not like it's a hard thing, it's a time consuming thing. You go slow, you take your time, you readjust as needed. Okay, I have my gusset sewn on. I got a little off on the top. I had my gusset was a little bit small for the top of this. Once I was sewing, I saw it shifting. So that did cause me to go just slightly off. You can see I'm not perfectly centered. I could shift it a little, but I wasn't perfectly centered with these seams. They're not exact with my panel. It's okay and it won't be noticed at the end. Just wanted to let you know that happened. You can see it's probably about a fourth of an inch off. And since I don't have cutting machines, it could be a cutting error and things like that. But sometimes you just get off with your cutting, with your seams, with whatever, but it's still gonna be a super cute bag. If I pop this out, I can see that it still looks fine at the top. You know, there's not any, even though that was the area where I had the extra, it's still okay. So don't get stressed and just keep going, adjust if you need to. So now that I have this portion complete, what I want to do before attaching the back is to add the binding. When we add the binding, we will then sew with that full seam allowance because right now we're just at an eighth of an inch. It shouldn't be as tricky as it was the first time going around because you already have everything stabilized. You're just coming in a little bit more. Typically, you know that I love to really do a nice binding. I go for a single fold binding and I prefer to do that. But this project where it is small and the way it's going to fit when it's closed, I will show you, you don't see your binding all that well. You can see it's just barely visible and it's not that noticeable of a project. If you have a project that opens wide, you really want to take the time on a nice binding. But for this, no one's going to be able to see the binding that well and it's not going to make that much difference. So for this project, I will save some time and energy. I will just use a double fold binding pre-made. Also, what you could do is you could use waterproof canvas. A lot of people use that these days for binding. You could use fold over elastic. But with this project where it's small and the way it um, is shaped that it doesn't open all the way up, you won't even tell your binding so much. So save some time and effort and just use either a pre-made or something that's a little simpler for you. So when I'm using my pre-made binding, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just fold that raw edge under and I'm just going to start clipping it on 
and I will try to make sure I space it evenly. The same amount on this side is the same amount on the other side. I will go and clip this all the way around, making sure to take the time to kind of have them evenly on both sides. When I get back around to this side, I will once again fold under the raw edge and I will just go past my original fold just to even out the bulk there. Now that I have this clipped on all the way around, I will just sew one final time on this side with that full quarter inch seam allowance. Using this pre-made binding definitely helps save some time and it won't affect the way it looks at the end. I have my binding attached to the one side of the Bag. and where this is not a bias binding you can see there is wrinkles on this I don't worry so much because like I said when I turn this it this part's all going to be hidden in the top the only part we'll see is down here at the bottom and we won't even get a good look so don't stress too much on that but yes if I would have had bias binding it would have definitely looked better when I look from this side, I can see that everything looks great. I always like to check for any like really obvious puckers or, or like pleats or anything like that. Everything looks really good except for that slight shift in the evenness of the gussets. Now what I'm going to do is the same process all over again for the back panel. So I will match up the centers, clip all the way around. Then I will attach this panel to the gusset with that basting eighth of an inch seam. Then I will go back and add the binding. I will use double fold again and I will sew that on with a quarter of an inch. That will complete the back portion. We would go ahead and turn it inside out, but then we will have to work on our wristlet strap and then we'll be done. That's how quick this project comes together. So now I have both sides bonded and ready to turn out. And then the only thing we'll have left to do is the wristlet strap. Everything looks super cute. I had the little issue with the gusset being higher on one side than the other. That was my fault, not a fault of the pattern. Of course, things happen. So the only thing I have to do now is I need to work on my wristlet strap. I cut out my strap and then I realized I did not have any three-fourths of an inch swivel hooks. I only had one inch. So I didn't want to recut or waste this material. So I'm just going to do mine just a little bit differently than the pattern suggests because of my, <laughs> my being out of material needed. I am going to use double-sided tape this time. Typically what I would do is I would just draw a line in the middle and then fold both raw edges to that middle and then fold it again like a piece of double fold tape. If I did that though with this one, my finished wristlet would end up being three quarters of an inch, which wouldn't look good with the hardware I have. So I'm going to do mine just a little bit differently than the pattern suggests. Now that I have my edges folded in, yours will look to be folded into the exact middle. Yours will be different. I'll just match up these long folded ends and have clips all the way down. Okay, now that I have everything clipped together, we're going to put on our swivel hook. There are several different ways to finish a wristless strap. The way I'm going to do mine is one of my favorite ways to do it. I will slip on my swivel hook and just push it halfway down. And then I will open up these edges and sew them right sides together. And that to me gives the cleanest finish on a wristlet strap. Lots of times I don't do this if I'm using webbing, but most of the time if I'm using a vinyl or a fabric wristlet, I'll do it this way just to get that kind of more hidden, more professional look. 
So now that I have those short ends clipped together, I'm just gonna sew across here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and then I will fold it back the way I need to. That edge is sewn. I'm going to open that seam up and clip everything together. I am folding it back the way it was originally now. Matching up those seams. I will butterfly them to kind of separate the bulk just a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch all the way around these two long edges to have this wristlet being held together so there's no separation here and just to give it a nice finished look. Now that I have that top stitched around both long edges, what I'll do is I'll slide this swivel hook to where that seam is. I will push that down and have it nested right above that seam and then I'm just going to do a top stitch right below that seam to kind of secure that in place. My wristlet strap is finished. If you wanted to put a rivet there just for extra decoration, you can. And I love using gold hardware. I know a lot of people don't like to, but I just think it's really bright and just adds such a unique color to it. So now my dew drop wristlet is done. I love it so much. It is adorable and cute. The vinyl panel worked out perfectly. The watermelons are just adorable. You can find the pattern in my description. It is from K. Ascona Designs. You can find the vinyl link to the website and the Facebook group in my description. This is from Glitter Bug Fairy. Anything you have any questions on, just let me know. I thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful time sewing, and I'd love to see your dewdrop wristlets if you decide to make one. Thanks so much, and have a great day.